All right, the last part of the video here is the wiring. Reference your schematics here on the Mag Hum uh, instruction guide. It'll tell you exactly what needs to be connected where. So follow the colors, follow to where it's going to go on the ESCs, and everything should make sense. Right? The tracks will be on channel 7, 8. Uh, they don't tell you that here, but that's essentially what we're doing. 1, 2, and 3 is for all the other motors. Number 4 is for our slew. Which is the rotating motor take away the pcb of the motors we've done that already and another thing we'll have to do is also um, for the mag home escs you don't have to do anything but if one of your mag home escs is burnt out or doesn't work like in my case you'll have to take out the red wire okay so in this case i'm using some alternative escs for the tracks okay and these are just uh, bi-directional, so it's forwards and reverse. There's no break, so if I need to go forwards or reverse, I can do that. With the Maghom ones, they're both tied into one goes to the motor, the slew motor. Okay, and then the other one goes to the connection to do the quick coupler or any other attachment that we want to do. I have some bullet connectors here, so we can disconnect these quickly. I still have to run this line. I'm just gonna 3D print something to come up along the line here. So it looks like a extra um, hydraulic line, but really it's not. Uh, another thing that I've 3D printed here is these, um, let's say hose uh, separators. And there's two of them here. I am gonna trim this down. I feel it's a little bit long. So I'll just pop these off, cut them down and then reconnect them. If you have any leaks like I do, I have a leak on this cylinder here, and I had a leak on this cylinder. Take these uh, fittings off, put some thread sealer or Loctite, uh, and then redo that, and hopefully that goes away. I'm still having an issue with this one here, leaking just a little bit. Uh, so uh, what happened is the top here is loose, so you might have to tighten this some more. Of course, they tested everything, um, but I still have leaks, so good job testing. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of everything. Following your instruction guide here, channels one, two, and three will be for the servos, okay? So these just connect directly to the receiver. Channel four, okay, if you wired it up properly, should come to, uh, where are we here? Here we go. So this guy, uh, that's the coupler. Where's my other one? Here it is. Okay, so this is for the slew motor, okay? follow this down it goes to channel four okay so this one we do not remove the red wire okay on the servo wire and then the two red and black go to the pcb okay and we just solder the red to the red to positive and the black to the negative side this is just a pcb board looks like this okay one side has a negative, one side has a positive. You connect all your black wires here, you solder them on, okay? And then you solder the red ones on here. Uh, it doesn't matter how, if they all touch each other, whatever, it really doesn't matter because this side is specifically set just for the red wire and the other side is just for the black wire. So positive, negative, okay? And then your ESC will also connect there. Um, so this is just a big old distribution board. It doesn't matter. You can connect them all to the same piece. Uh, the idea is it's all getting power. So then we connect our main power. I'm using a Dean's connector. You can use whatever you like. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is gonna connect to our ESC as well, power, okay? Uh, but back to our slew motor. Okay, I just wrote slew there, or rotating motor. This is gonna go and the blue wire is gonna get soldered to the blue wire. And the yellow wire is gonna connect to the red wire. You may have different. I disconnected this little guy here. Um, so he doesn't do anything anymore. I just need the motor to be the motor. Uh, so that way we're just rotating uh, without any issues. Okay, so let's move on to the quick coupler. Again, the ESC goes to channel 5 here. Uh, you can pick any of the other channels. I just picked channel 5. Now the wires for this one. Again, the yellow is going to go to one of the black wires and the other one goes to the other and then we could always um, 
connect it, it really doesn't matter because eventually we're just going to set it to a switch and it's just going to be on and off so that we provide power for the motor to go one way and then power to the motor to go the opposite direction. So it's not really important which direction they go. They're just there. They get soldered on. So the yellow and blue wires, okay, these yellow and blue wires will connect all the way to that guy, okay? The red and black, again, we'll go back to your PCB. Now, let's get into the ESC here. So the ESC, um, it likes 7.4 volts. They say it'll go up to uh, 3S. I'm not sure 3S is that good for this particular ESC, but if you wanna run 3S, you can. Um, I have it connected like this is all three black wires. You'll wire them up. Uh, you'll have to put the bullets on here. So you're gonna have to solder these all on and then connect them here. There is a specific way. If the motor doesn't want to turn, then just change two wires. Okay. And then the motor will spin. Okay. Um, this particular ESC, the servo wire will connect to channel six. Okay. So channel six. ESC has the red wire. So everybody here has their red wire in. It's these last two. The only reason why is because I had a burnt out ESC. And if that wasn't the case, then I would be using another ESC here for that. Uh, they don't provide you with an extra ESC for the quick coupler, which came with the original machine. Um, you'd have to buy an extra ESC. These particular ESCs are rated for a 2S lipo um so if i put a 3s here i can say goodbye to these guys so that means you're gonna have to get a esc that can handle 3s and that'll do forwards and backwards only no break um, but anyways these ones here i had to remove the red wire okay to the servo wire because it doesn't like to draw more power because the power is already coming from the main esc so each one will go to channel seven, channel eight. We remove the wires for the servos. And then here on the schematics, it says the red and the black will be connected, okay, to the red and the black on this ESC. On the Maghum version, you'll see that the red and the black goes to the yellow and the blue. So just follow that if you're using the Maghum ones. I'm not. Um, but that's what it would look like. And then on the other side, the brown would go to the yellow and the orange will go to the blue. In my case here, I just went red to orange and black to brown. If you have an issue with direction, if one goes one way and you're pushing the opposite direction, just reverse the channel. Um, and yeah, there we go. Uh, that's a quick wiring guide. I know it looks really messy, but if you follow this, you should be all right. Uh, I wouldn't see any challenges as far as what needs to be wired up. Just follow where the wires go and then you can connect them there. Um, each channel here, up to eight channels. So if you are going to be doing this, get a 10 channel receiver uh, and transmitter uh, that'll uh, handle that and then do that. If you wanna go with the 3S LiPo, uh, change these little guys to a ESC that'll handle it. Uh, these little ones, apparently they'll handle it. Uh, I don't know, but anyways, in my case here, I'm just using the Maghum ones for the uh, rotating motor and one for the coupler. These other two guys I already had, so I just fixed them to here. I'm gonna be running this on 7.4 volts. I'm not gonna go to the 3S, just cause I don't feel like this setup has what it takes this gets really hot once you put 3s to it with 7.4 not so much um yeah uh filling up there's a procedure basically uh when we're gonna go fill up the this tank here we're gonna run the main boom first the fluid level will go down when you start to see it go down add more fluid keep cycling this as you see the fluid go down add more fluid Keep adding fluid till all of the cylinders have been cycled fully, okay? So they've gone up and down a couple times and they everything seems smooth. And then top it up, there's a couple lines, there's a minimum and a maximum. Fill it up to the maximum and then you shouldn't have any problems as far as fluid levels. 
Uh, if you are having leaks, get those leaks fixed. Make sure all your lines are the length you need because going after the fact is a bit of a pain in the butt, which I'm going to have to do here because I'm going to have to pull this out and just shorten four of these cables, uh, sorry, hoses, uh, just so that this isn't so big and cumbersome. Uh, I just don't want to have pressure being put against one side here. This should be straight. Now, another thing you might have to do is cut out some extra room for those hoses to go through because this is pretty much flat, so there won't be any room. So you want to cut this open a little bit and then have that relief there for it to go through. Uh, probably another thing to do as well is if you can cut some slots here or cut this out and 3D print a new door, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing is cutting out a door, putting in some uh, vents, and then throwing a fan in there so that the air circulates through. I'm going to have a new uh, top here for the battery. You're going to have to probably use a shorty, um, so like a four. 4600 5000 milliamp shorty 7.4 volt battery um, that'll fit because this isn't designed for your big uh, long batteries just to give you an idea this is a 7.4 volt okay and it does not fit right so you're gonna need to get the shorty version uh, this will not fit this way either it just won't fit because once everything is in there you have nowhere to put it, right? This is going to be covered with electronics. Cab goes here. This side has the step, which is over there. So there's really not much room to put anything. All right, guys, any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.